Good morning. Time for a Wednesday morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. I think my, I just we just got back from a walk, and I think my my glasses haven't transitioned yet. So look, my future's so bright, I gotta wear shades, you know. So anyway, here it's a good morning. I had prayer group this morning, so I had to be at the church by seven. I actually made it by seven. Had a good breakfast. Breakfast on a bun from Waterbury. Just can't beat that. Uh, and then they sang happy birthday to me and gave me a a, a, ja a raspberry filled jelly donut. <laughs> so that was special and good and um, not a good day to start my diet, I guess. <sighs> but let's see. I uh, came home and took the dogs for a walk and fed them. And now I'm gonna do this and go on to the office so and tonight we start choir rehearsal our first choir rehearsal since COVID began so um, we're not gonna sing and on Sunday morning for another couple of weeks but, um, but <clears throat> well well, um, practice. One of the things that Katie's, Katie's a wonderful choir director and um, great singer, beautiful voice. She likes to bake. And, um, and she used to bring us a dessert after every choir rehearsal. <laughs> I asked her last night. She's in Kiwanis. She just joined Kiwanis. Her husband, Drew, has been a member for a while and she joined too. And I said, we're going to do desserts because, you know, I, I like to eat. I talk about food a lot. <laughs> but temptation, I, I don't like to hurt anybody's feelings. If somebody offers me food, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> anyway, she said, I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, thank you. Because I like it and I enjoy spending time with people afterwards. But also, sometimes we're just ready to come home. It's been a long day with prayer group starting so early but um so we're not going to do the dessert unless somebody else brings it because katie and drew moved from cleburne to um, midlothian so they're about 45 minutes drive away so she's going to be ready to get home and um i certainly don't blame her i'm a home buddy myself see if there's anything else i need to talk about yeah last year a little over a year and almost a year and a half ago, I found out my cousin, Chris, it's my cousin Stuart's son, Chris was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And he's been through a lot um, with that for the past year and a year and a few months. And he's, he's doing pretty well. I mean, he still has some healing to do, but they got all the cancer. This is incredible. And um, they had to do some major liver surgery, and um, but I think he's doing pretty well. And then today I got an email. Um, I was gonna somebody had a prayer request for somebody. I was gonna type it in so I could remember the name when I went to the office and got an email from from my cousin Stuart. But it's actually about my cousin Dina's daughter Erin, who all was diagnosed Sunday with acute leukemia. So, so anyway, it's just gone from one to the other, and Erin's a, she was the only one of my, my aunt and uncle, Normanita's only granddaughter. They had, um, I guess, five grandsons and one granddaughter. She's a special girl. I, I was privileged to perform her wedding um, in Chicago at Bond Chapel, her husband. And his name is Andy also. Um, her husband, Andy, is a doctor. He was in med school at the time at University of Chicago. So they got married at the chapel. Not the big chapel on the campus, but the small chapel, the one where the, the seminary um, worships. And a beautiful, beautiful Gothic building. And um, so I got to perform that wedding. It's one of my first weddings to perform. So pretty, pretty cool, uh, great memories. Uh, she's such a intelligent, bright, talented woman, beautiful woman. I mean, she's just a really wonderful girl. I mean, it's 
communicated with her much since the wedding, but um, I remember when she was a little girl, probably about two or three, she, um, I was at their house and she was on the couch and she's said, I love you, I love you, I love you. She kept saying to me and I just wanted to tell her husband Andy that I was the first Andy that she loved. Anyway, so we'll be in prayer for Aaron and Andy and their three children, Annabelle, Will, and Mac. So, and my cousin Dina and her husband Henry and their son Mark, who's I believe living up there with them. Anyway, it's time for me to put this dog out. Dina's the one since I was born. You know, my birthday was two days ago. My cousin Dina. Um, <clears throat> my mom's maiden name is Mills, and my middle name is Mills, Andrew Mills. And when I, when I was when my dad came out to tell them that I was born as a boy, so his name is Andrew Mills. Dina said, "What's his What's his middle name?" And my dad looked at her. His last name is Tyler. <laughs> Anyway, it's great. Great old story that we love to, one of those stories that families love to tell. This is our Wednesday of week one. Is Christ the author of creation? We saw yesterday that the revelation was reciprocal. Jesus reveals God and God reveals Jesus. Jesus is growing upon the human race. He is proving to be so much greater than we thought. And that revelation which God gave him are the words in that revelation which God gave him are the words saying that Jesus is the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. How first is that first and how last is that last? Is he the Alpha, the Christ of the beginning and the Omega, the Christ of the final word? We see that be, that, that beginning stretches back further than we had thought, back beyond the historical account of 2,000 years ago, back to creation and beyond. Some strange passages like these take our breath. All things were made through him, Christ, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's John 1, 3. And this, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. That's Hebrews 1, 2. And this, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. That's Colossians 1, 15 and 16. What do these strange passages in which it is said unequivocally that God created the world through Christ mean? The usual idea is that God created the world and that Jesus appeared 2,000 years ago to reveal God and to redeem us. Here it says that God created the world through Christ. Without him was nothing made that was made. Do they mean that the touch of Christ is upon all creation? That everything is made in its inner structure to work in Christ's way? That if it works in his way, it works well and harmoniously, and if it works some other way, it works its own ruin? Is everything destined by its nature to be in Christ? Deep theological stuff I believe we are going to read about in this book, In Christ by East Neely Jones. Here's our prayer for today. O oh Christ, we begin to see the revelation that God is making of you. We begin to see your footprints everywhere in the scriptures, in nature, in us. We are afire to see more for what we see transforms. Amen. And our affirmation for the day. If I am destined to be in him, in Christ, then I shall accept that destiny and work it out. Before I say our creed, I'm just going to look and see when this book, this is, this book was written in 1961, in case you're wondering. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>